Welcome to EPISD's Digital Discoveries, exploring the world of education technology in the El Paso Independent School District. Hi, welcome to this episode of Digital Discoveries. Um, we're looking at the new technology application TEKS. And so for the next several episodes, we're going to be looking at how the TEKS are set up, um, how we did them. We've already had one episode where we kind of looked at the history of the TEKS, the technology application TEKS. We looked at how they differ from the previous set of technology application TEKS. Now we're going to get a little bit more granular. We're going to get a little bit more uh, into how the TEKS are actually set up. Since uh, these episodes have to do with TEKS, probably our students aren't so uh, too much interested in, in what we're talking about. So we're kind of gearing these episodes about the technology application TEKS for our teachers, because it's our teachers that are going to have to be uh, implementing the TEKS into their class lessons. So students are, of course, welcome to watch. But teachers, this is, this is kind of teacher talk. So um, we're, we're talking about uh, how put these TEKS into class lessons. So let's review real quick and find uh, remember that uh, what the uh, TEKS are based on. And the TEKS are based on the National Education for Tech, uh, National Education Technology Standards for Students, the NETS for Students. And they come from an organization called ISTE. ISTE is kind of like the International Organization for Science, uh, International Society for Technology Educators. And so they kind of set up the, the worldwide standards for for how students should be using technology in the classroom. And in Texas, when they started writing their new TEKS, they looked very strongly at those uh, ISTE's NETS standards for students. And so since they looked so closely at those standards, guess what? The six strands that are in the NETS, there are six strands there. We talked about them last time, the creativity, technology operations, et cetera, et cetera. Guess what? The technology application TEKS for K-8 also have those ex almost those exact same six strands. And they're the same strands. They don't throw one in at, at, at fourth grade that's not there in all the other ones. So very similar to how the core curricular or any other uh, uh, TEKS are, are written for our, our other classroom uh, curricular areas. And so these six strands are taught all the way from kindergarten all the way up through eighth grade. And they kind of build on each other sound familiar? It should sound familiar. And so we, that's one of the reasons why we can't wait till the very end to start teaching technology. We can't wait till middle school, for instance, to start teaching technology to our students. These things build upon each other. And so by sixth grade, there should be some expectations that the students had worked in kindergarten through fifth grade. And then by eighth grade, there's an expectation that they did sixth, seventh, and eighth, uh, sixth and seventh grade work in these strands. So let's take a look at these strands, see what they actually are. They match very well with our nets for students' uh, strands. The first one is creativity and innovation. We're going to talk, actually, we're going to go in a little bit depth about what each one of these, but let's just go over the, the six that are there. The second one is communication and collaboration. Third one, research and information fluency. Then critical thinking, problem solving, and decision making. That's a big strand, but it doesn't have any more student expectations than the other strands. There's digital citizenship and then technology operations and concepts. You'll notice that looking at these strands, if, uh, if you're a teacher that's been around for a while, you might notice that the previous set of technology application TEKS only had four strands. And so they've added, they've added uh, two more strands. But in the past, those old TEKS, they had a very heavy emphasis on the nuts and bolts of technology, the how to set up a computer, how to, how to you know, connect to the internet, that kind of thing. And if you'll notice in our new, uh, our new strands, that's only one of the six strands. So the nuts and bolts part of using technology is just one strand. So you, you can tell that they've de-emphasized that because with our students now, there's kind of an expectation that students have some basic knowledge of how to use technology before they even get to school. And so um, they're using those uh, cell phones, they're using their smartphones, they're using computers at home. So they kind of have, have minimized the nuts and bolts and they're, they're emphasizing the use of the computer to create content. And so that's why there's uh, four strands that are just on creativity, communication, research, critical thinking. 
And then there's a whole new strand there on digital citizenship. And that's something we should be teaching our students from the very, very beginning. And so we're going to look at each one of these real quick and then see uh, what they're asking us to do. And then in upcoming episodes, we're going to look at specific student expectations, what they're asking the students to do specifically in these, uh, in these strands. So let's take a look at the first one, which is creativity and innovation. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to read. I know it's horrible to read right off of, a, of a, a slide like this. But I want to give you the exact language that the state's using when they're talking about these TEKs so that you can understand what they're asking our students to do. So here with creativity and innovation, uh, it specifically says the students uses creative thinking and innovative processes to construct knowledge and develop digital products. Okay, Creativity and innovation. So start thinking about that. Think about what do you do in your classroom when st uh, to have students do creative thinking and innovative processes to construct knowledge and develop digital products. I know that almost all of our teachers try to get our students to think creatively, creatively. And we try to get all of our students to think innovatively. Now, what we tr have kind of not do so much is use technology in that process. And so we're really not asking too much more than what we would normally do. We're just like sliding in technology. We already do creative thinking. We already do innovative thinking with our core curricular areas. So here's how th in this particular strand here, we're asking you slide in technology when you're talking about creative thinking and innovative processes. So let's look at the second strand, communication and collaboration. And I have a picture here of a class that's doing a video conference. So let's look at what the state says specifically about communication and collaboration. The student collaborates and communicates both locally and globally using digital tools and resources to reinforce and promote learning. So let's think about that for just a second. You know, one of, the, one of the knocks against education has always been, well, we just stay in our little classroom. We close the door. We stay in that classroom. And I know that we don't do that here in our district, but that's kind of the perception that's out there. Well, with these TEKs, with this strand here, they're asking our students to not just communicate with themselves, with their, own, their fellow students in their classroom. They're not asking our students just to, to talk to fellow students in their school. They're asking their students to knock down those walls. They're asking our teachers, knock down those walls of communication and start talking to people outside the school outside the district, outside the state, outside. They, they're talking, they literally are saying here, communicate with people on a global scale. And so uh, the reason I have that picture of video conferencing is because video conferencing, those kind of tools, allow our students to do that. And in our school district, we have a lot of video conferencing equipment out there. And even if you don't have it in your classroom, you have the capability of doing that using just a laptop computer and a webcam. So. So we'll, we'll come back to that in upcoming episodes about how we can do that specifically, how we can collaborate and communicate. And we'll even talk about what the difference between collaboration and group work is, because collaboration and group work aren't always the same thing. So let's look at that third strand, research and information fluency. The student acquires and evaluates digital content. This is something that's very, very important because what happens with our students is that when typically we'll ask them to go find something on the internet and what do they do? They'll go to a search engine such as Google. They'll type in their, their subject area, yeah, whatever it is, planet Jupiter, and they'll pick the very first few uh, hits that come up. And so they don't critically look at those, uh, those resources to see if they're valid. And so um, we're going to talk about that in some upcoming episodes. How do you look at those things critically and make sure that they're valid resources of information? How do you look at them and say, this is, this is something that is a good resource as opposed to a bad resource? Now, we've been doing this for years in libraries. We've been going to the library, and we, we would look at research and kind of, kind of, if it was in the library, we kind, of, uh, we kind of said, well, if it's in the library, it must be a good resource. If it's in the encyclopedia, it must be a good resource. 
The internet's changed that completely because there's now so many resources. We have this huge, huge electronic library that's out there. And not all the resources are good. So what are we doing to show our students the good resources versus the bad resources? Because we know that in search engines, sometimes the resources that are being paid for are the ones that show up first. And so students uh, might go to Google, for instance, type in a search, get 5,000, 5 million hits back. And they always just take that first page of, of hits and assume that those are the best ones. But how do we know that the best thing that they're looking for isn't number one million or two million or seven million? So you never know. So in research and information fluency, we're t asking our students to look at information, be able to critically evaluate it, and see if it's really uh, an authentic, if it's, a, if it's a valid source of information. And that kind of slides in next with the next strand, critical thinking, problem solving, and decision making. The student applies critical thinking skills to solve problems, guide research, and evaluate projects using digital tools and resources. So you see how these kind of mesh together, these, uh, these uh, different strands. And so what tools can we use with our students? What digital tools can we use to improve critical thinking skills? things such as mind maps, for instance, are kind of things that we can use for critical thinking. Have students work out a, uh, uh, an electronic, um, you know, something like on Inspiration or Kidspiration or Bubble.us. Those are kind of things that where we can have students plan using electronic uh, devices. We can have students uh, use websites to evaluate, uh, evaluate different things. You know, there's even websites that will tell you if something is, um, is plagiarized or not. And so our students can actually, that's not just for teachers, our students can actually use those sites to see if something's been plagiarized or not. So those are the kind of things that we'll talk about in upcoming episodes. But that's the, f the, s the strand that's probably one of the hardest to actually do, is that critical thinking, problem solving, and decision making. That's one of the strands that shows up again and again and again of course, from K to 8, but it also shows up in our core curricular areas as well because we ask our students in our core curricular areas to do critical thinking, problem solving, and decision making. The fifth strand is digital citizenship. Students practice safe, responsible, legal, and ethical behavior while using digital tools and resources. You know, we're required by law to teach our students how to use um, uh, how to use the internet safely. That it's not just a teak, which of course is the law, the teaks are the laws, uh, but we're also required by, by our federal funding mandates that we have to teach our students how to use the internet safely and effectively. Now we've all heard stories about bullying and online bullying and things like that and cyber safety, but we have to start looking at how do, we, how do we use that with our students, how do we reinforce that over and over and over in these lessons when they're on the internet, how do we teach them how to use that responsibly? Um, how do we teach them how to go to the correct websites, not just the, the goofy websites? How do we teach them how to use resources like YouTube to find good information, not just goofy information? So that's what digital citizenship is all about, how to behave online, how to, uh, how to meet the needs of our acceptable use policies that we have in place. So, you know, I think that a lot of times students and parents just sign those acceptable use policies because it's another piece of paper. But I would suspect that most people don't even know what's in our acceptable use policy. And most students probably don't know what's in our district acceptable use policy. And what we have to do as educators is reinforce those proper and uh, correct ways of using our digital uh, devices. And it's not just our computers, it's also our cell phones, it's our cameras, all different kinds of things. You know, there's that old, uh, there's that old saying that uh, um, water, water takes the path of least resistance. And our students will do the same thing with digital uh, information. They're gonna go to the, to the goofiest stuff first. They're gonna go to the weirdest stuff first and find that because that's funny or it's amusing to them. And so what we have to do is we have to like move that water in a different direction and show them the proper way that that water should be flowing, the proper way to get information, the proper way to use uh, social networking. Social networking is becoming a big thing in our, in our 
in our world, not only in our schools, but also in our world in general. So how do they use those properly? How do they use those without getting into trouble? Finally, the last strand is technology operations and concepts. The student demonstrates knowledge and appropriate use of technology systems, concepts, and operations. This is the strand where the previous TEKS, the old set of TEKS, kind of covered mostly, but they've been, kind of been compressed down into one smaller strand, uh, one single strand here with the new TEKS. This is the nuts and bolts TEKS, where we show students how to use uh, equipment properly. How to, uh, how to save files, how to surf the internet. You know, it's, it's a, you know, a lot of times we'll say to ourselves, well, how can somebody not know how to surf the internet? But there are students that, um, that are new in, into using electronics. There are, our little ones, for instance, our kindergartners, our first graders, they may not know how to actually use word, uh, search engines like Yahooligans or things like that. So we have to show them how to do that. Um, we have to show them how to get online. We have to show them how to save a file. We have to show them how to use a keyboard or a mouse. Some students aren't familiar with th those. Most students are, but some aren't. And so this technology operations and concept strand is a strand where students are taught the basic operations of how to use all these electronic devices that, that we have for them. And we do have lots and lots of electronic devices scattered throughout the district. And uh, they have a lot of electronic devices, and so we have to show them how to use that. That doesn't mean that you as a teacher has to be an expert on every single electronic device that's out there. But there are places to point our students to, to show them how to do it. And there are some basic things that I think everybody needs to know. And so turning on a computer, everybody should know how to do that. And so most adults, most students know how to do that. But there might be one or two students that don't know how to turn on a computer, so we need to show them how to do that. So that's our six strands. Those are the six strands, creativity and innovation, communication and collaboration, research and information fluency, critical thinking, problem solving, decision making, digital citizenship, and that final one, technology operations and concepts. Those are the six strands in the new technology application TEKS that go into effect in our classrooms the 2012-2013 school year. I want to let you know there's a place on Project Share where you can get more information about the, uh, about the uh, technology application TEKS. Here's the website. It's, uh, it's a group called the Technology Application TEKS uh, um, group. <laughs> Not a very clever name, but it's a technology application TEKS group. There's the, there's the link to it. If you're a teacher in Texas, you can join that group. And uh, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of teachers that are members of that group right now. That's where people throughout the state will be posting information about the technology application TEKS. And so you might be able to find stuff from other school districts right there. There's already some information from school districts throughout the state that have been posted up there. There's some information from TEA that's posted in that group. So give it a visit. It might be a good reason for you to, to jump into Project Share if you haven't joined, joined in already. Also, all of these videos are available on our YouTube channel in EPISD. It's EPISD TV Studio. Just when you log into YouTube, just uh, do a search for EPISD TV Studio and you'll see all of these videos that we've created, not only for digital discoveries, but for all of our programming that we do. That's the second session on the new technology application TEKS, the six strands. So our first one was an introduction to the technology application TEKS. This one was the six strands that we're using for the technology application TEKS. And then in upcoming episodes, we're going to look at uh, the student expectations that the students are expected to do, and we're going to start we're going to start ripping apart those teaks and and really seeing what they're asking them to do, and we're going to correlate them to our uh, core curricular areas, and I'll show you how to do that in upcoming episodes. Thank you for joining me for this episode of uh, Digital Discoveries, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Digital Discoveries. Please visit our website for more information and our YouTube channel for all other episodes of Digital Discoveries.